This is CBN News Watch. And thank you so much for joining us on this Monday, January 25th, 2021. I'm Ephraim Graham. We begin this half hour with the White House set to block travelers from entering the United States from nations believed to have a new variant of COVID-19. And another stimulus check could be on the way. Dale Hurd is on the story. During the presidential campaign, critics said Joe Biden accused Donald Trump of xenophobia for imposing travel bans on non-citizens from countries considered COVID hotspots. Now he's doing the same thing. Today, Biden will reinstate COVID-19 travel restrictions on non-U.S. travelers from Brazil, Ireland, the United Kingdom, 26 European countries, and South Africa because of concerns about a new variant of the virus. He's reversing an order from President Donald Trump in his final days in office that called for the relaxation of the restrictions. Officials say the highly contagious UK variant of the virus has now been detected in 23 states. The virus is basically telling us that it's going to continue to change and we've got to be ready for it. But scientists stress more research is needed on whether the variant is deadlier. It could be that the variant hit the UK uh, when their hospitals were overwhelmed. And we know when hospitals get overwhelmed, mortality rates tend to rise. It's clearly still a deadly disease and clearly more contagious. With the U.S. now surpassing 25 million cases of coronavirus, according to John Hopkins University, the White House has promised to deliver 100 million doses of COVID-19 vaccine in 100 days. But so far, heavy demand for the vaccines is outstripping the supply and some vaccination distribution sites are seeing hour-long waits. That's not the way we treat those we consider vulnerable in need of this vaccine most. You can't just tell the states and the local governments, here's some vaccines, now you go do it. No, we have to coordinate. We have to provide the resources. Meanwhile, Biden is trying to win bipartisan backing for a $1.9 trillion coronavirus relief package, but is getting pushback from Republicans over the federal government racking up even bigger deficits. Spending and borrowing trillions of dollars from the Chinese, among others, is not necessarily the best thing we can do to get our economy to be strong long term. If passed, the relief package would include another round of direct payments of $1,400 to most Americans. Dale Hurd, CBN News. The House is set to bring impeachment, the impeachment article against former President Donald Trump to the Senate for trial, but a growing number of Republican senators say they oppose the proceedings. Analysts say that's a sign chances are dimming for a conviction for Trump in the case of inciting the siege on the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. House Democrats prosecuting the case will walk the charge of incitement of insurrection to the Senate this evening. But again, GOP passions appear to have cooled since the insurrection, with the Republican senators who will serve as jurors in the trial. They are now rallying to his legal defense, and the trial is set to begin in just two weeks. Given the political chaos in Washington, you can understand why Americans might not be paying attention to what's happening in the Middle East or elsewhere. You can be sure, however, the Middle East is thinking about the United States, and one specific country is expected to challenge the new president. Country, Iran, and it's already testing the waters. Iran is provoking a conflict. I think a big question is whether President Biden and his team can figure out a way to to stop them. President Biden plans to enter negotiations with Iran and possibly re-enter the controversial nuclear deal that President Obama made with Biden as his vice president. President Trump pulled out of the deal while also slapping sanctions on the regime. Negotiation would be a good way to do it. Nobody wants a war in this region again, but, but Biden is going to be tested. Middle East expert Joel Rosenberg says Iran is telegraphing intentions by taking rogue action. The regime recently seized the South Korean tanker and its crew near the Strait of Hormuz and also raised its uranium enrichment level, putting it on course to develop a nuclear weapon. Rosenberg says it's important that Biden and his team of advisors learn from the mistakes of his former boss, such as not including regional players like Israel, the UAE, Bahrain, and the Saudis when negotiating the Iranian nuclear deal. But also the flaws in the deal that didn't deal with missiles, that didn't deal with terrorism, that didn't deal with any of these other issues, and left all these loopholes. Loopholes like Iran's widespread use of proxies across the Middle East, 
such as Hezbollah in Lebanon and Syria, the Houthis in Yemen, and militias in Iraq that have attacked U.S. troops there. The Iranian art of war is based on fighting on other people's lands by other people's hands. Israeli Reserve Brigadier General Asaf Orian says the biggest factor shaping the Middle East right now is America's transition to power. Trump gave the Iranians the impression that he's pretty uh, unpredictable. According to Orion, the Iranians took extreme caution about launching attacks against the U.S. with Trump in office. The stage is set for the Biden administration. While we focus on the nuclear as the most uh, severe threat, we shouldn't uh, overlook Iran's dual strategy of doing also indirect proxy warfare across the Middle East. Rosenberg adds Biden must keep maximum pressure on Iran to create the right conditions to negotiate and avoid war. All eyes are going to be on Biden. And if he flinches in the light of Iran's intransigence, it's going to be a very troubled season ahead. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Up to two million Ethiopians are facing starvation amid intense fighting between the government and rebel groups in the northern part of that country. Fighting increased last week in the Tigray region, spurring reports of a bloody massacre at a church in the Ethiopian city of Aksum that killed more than, more than 700 people. Our Chuck Holton is on this story. For more than 2,000 years, Ethiopians have believed their country holds one of the most sacred relics in all Christianity, the Ark of the Covenant. Here in the city of Aksum, a special church known as the Church of St. Mary of Zion is where the Ark is said to have rested for centuries. Adventurer and historian Bob Cornuke has explored the region extensively. The Ethiopians believe that the Ark of the Covenant came to Aksum about 800 years ago. And it's in a very special holy church. One man guards it. Uh, he's the guardian of the Ark. He's the only one allowed to see it. When he dies, there'll be another guardian. It is entrenched in their culture, and they believe it with all their heart. Heavy fighting between a regional militia and the Ethiopian army has been raging in this area since November. The city of Aksum has been at the center of the conflict. Tragedy struck last week as Ethiopian Christians gathered in Aksum to celebrate one of the most important holidays in Ethiopian Orthodox Christianity, the annual festival of Timcat. Timcat is a celebration of the Epiphany with the Orthodox Church in Ethiopia. And it's where they bring out the Taubut or the tablets from the Ark of the Covenant and they parade it around and it's a very holy event for them, but this year something went horribly wrong. Up to a thousand worshipers surrounded the ancient church, said to house the Ark of the Covenant, when Ethiopian troops approached and, according to eyewitnesses, opened fire. More than 700 Ethiopian Christians were said to have been killed, though confirmation of the attack has been difficult because the area is closed to journalists. The fighting has led to a massive wave of refugees fleeing across the nearby border into Sudan. Aid agencies warn mass starvation is a real factor if the world doesn't act soon. Incoming refugees report almost daily massacres by both sides, as well as mass rapes and other human rights abuses. Humanitarian aid organizations on the ground are calling the situation urgent. President Biden's pick for Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, called for U.S. engagement in his recent confirmation hearing. Ethiopia, I share your, your, your deep concerns. Uh, we have seen uh, a number of deeply, deeply uh, concerning actions taken, including uh, atrocities. We need to see restoration of communications. We need access for humanitarian assistance uh, in the region. And I worry as well that what started there has the potential to be destabilizing throughout the, uh, the Horn of Africa. The Ethiopian government denies the atrocities, and both sides are claiming victory in the conflict. But the UN says there is plenty of blame to go around. We have received cons consistent information pointing to violations of international humanitarian law and human rights law by all parties to the conflict. And these include artillery strikes on populated areas, the deliberate targeting of civilians, extrajudicial killings and widespread looting. No matter which side actually wins this civil war, the losers will be the people of this region as more than 1,000 refugees per day flee into makeshift camps across the Sudanese border just hoping to survive. For CBN News, 
I'm Chuck Holton. Coming up, Marching for Life. Hear the latest about the annual march and the fight to save the lives of the unborn. We've got the story for you when we come back. You're watching CBN Newswatch. Stay with us. Christians around the world are standing with the Israelis. But why? In CBN's free magazine, Friends of Israel, you'll discover why Christians are supporting the Jewish state, how Israel is fulfilling prophecy as a light to the nations, and ways you can pray for the people of Israel. Israel needs the support of friends like you. Call now or go to CBN.com to get your free copy of Friends of Israel. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the work of your spirit, Lord God, with this movement of getting the Bible, yes. Lord, into public schools. Watch The Prayer Link, Tuesday nights at 6.30. If you're tired and exhausted all day, you can't think clearly, and you really just need a cup or even a pot of coffee to get through your day, then join me, Dr. Josh Axe, for this new series where I'm going to teach you how to transform your diet and use essential oils and supplements to get a better night's sleep. Get Protect Your Sleep and live your best life with innovative information from five leading sleep experts. If you're not a great sleeper, you can do things to make yourself a great sleeper. If you're already a pretty good sleeper, you can enhance your sleep and be even better. Discover a sleep-enhancing bedtime routine. How to put insomnia to rest. Learn how to relieve pain that disturbs sleep. And much more in Protect Your Sleep. Everything you do, you do better with a good night's sleep. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 to get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. Don't miss out on this brand new series. And we're back with a stunning statistic. More lives are lost to abortion in a year than all other causes of death combined. Later this week, pro-life advocates journey to the nation's capital and even more will join the annual March for Life virtually. Paul Strand has the story. The annual March for Life puts a bright spotlight on just how globally devastating abortion is. There are more lives lost worldwide to abortion. The estimates range between 42 and 54 million. More lives lost to abortion worldwide each year than all other causes of death combined. Steve Carlin writes about battling abortion in This Is When We Begin to Fight. He appreciates the March for Life. It reminds people of the barbarity of abortion. It fires us up. It inspires us to go out and stand in prayer at a 40 Days for Life vigil, to serve in our pregnancy help centers. People at a prayer vigil had a deep impact on Michelle Shelfer's life. She'd already had one abortion and was headed into a clinic to get another. There was a cluster of people praying outside. Now, they didn't say a word to me. They didn't come close to me but I know what they were doing. And even if I hadn't known, their prayers were answered because I went in, paid my money and sat down. And at the end of an hour, the doctor still hadn't come to call me in. And I got up and I left. My husband was going through the same change of heart at the same time. And he called me and dragged me out of there. We got our money back. We sat in the car of the, in the, in the parking lot of the abortion clinic. And he proposed to me there. And that's where we started our married life and our family. I really credit those people who were standing outside the clinic. Danielle D'Souza Gill wrote The Choice, The Abortion Divide in America. She says those praying outside clinics or joining the March for Life help to counter the culture's message. Right now, we don't have the media, we don't have Hollywood, we don't have all these things, these outlets for people to say, oh yeah, you know, I really do think things that so many other people think. They, the left often makes us feel like we're the weirdos. We're the people who are the fringe people. Our views are really not, you know, not the mainstream. I think there's value in seeing those around you who are questioning the morality of abortion. Shelfer, an animator, has drawn and published hundreds of babies' faces she calls foundlings. To honor the almost two billion children who have been lost to abortion worldwide in the last, I think it's 60 years or so. She helps lead those feeling guilty about past abortions toward healing in her book, Prepare a Room. And she offers the foundling portraits to those facing up to their post-abortion trauma. Many of them don't even come to grips with it 
for 10, 20 years after the event occurred. It's, it's a very, very uh, delayed process. Carlin says the anguish is often even worse than for those suffering miscarriages, a pain with which his family is well acquainted. We just had some friends over for dinner who just suffered their fifth miscarriage. It's a tremendous loss. And it was a very difficult experience for, for my wife and me. And as a husband and father, it was very difficult not only to lose two children to miscarriage, but to see the, the physical and the emotional pain that it wrought on my wife. But for those who abort, Shelfer says there's the added crushing weight of guilt. She read from Prepare a Room how the act betrays their very identity of being maternal. We were not just women having abortions. We were mothers having abortions. Abortion turned us mothers into unmothers. It costs. Gill's book, The Choice, references a study of 877,000 women that shows those who had an abortion are 110 percent more likely to abuse alcohol and 155 percent more likely to commit suicide. Gill reads from her book how women describe their experiences. I didn't expect the grief. It overwhelmed me. Every woman I've spoken to who had an abortion, regardless of their situation at the time, spoke of grief. It feels like you aren't allowed to grieve if it was your choice to do this. These women are carrying these things around for years, even Christian women, even the women sitting beside you in the pews. Shelfer knew what it was like to feel God couldn't forgive her. I felt that the sin of abortion that I had committed was beyond his reach. Was his, his arm was just too short to reach me. Shelfer has found peace and forgiveness and now helps other post-abortive women reach it. Meanwhile, efforts like the March for Life and 40 Days for Life concentrate on driving down the number of future abortions. We're down now from uh, around 1.8 million a year, perhaps 30 years ago, to uh, under a million a year. Long way to go, but a lot of progress has been made so far. The March for Life, being mostly virtual this year, comes to a computer near you Friday, January 29th. Paul Strand, CBN News, Washington. If you want to know more about this year's virtual March for Life, or if you need help recovering from an abortion, we have some resources for you at our website. Of course, just visit cbnnews.com for more information. Stay with us. We're sitting down with worship leader Chandler Moore. We'll be right back. When I came to Regent University, it's like the world opened up. I felt like I needed to advance my career and go back to school. Regent was a perfect fit for me. The Regent professors are world class. You are equipped. The focus of the faculty is on each individual student, whether it's online or in person. You become a part of Regent's family. You carry with you not just the content and the knowledge, but the confidence to understand that we can be significant in the world. Regent University, follow your path. Nigerian Christians are Christians being Christians in Iran are routinely arrested. Nepali Christians of their continue to suffer. In times of trial and affliction, you need to know the truth. One of the fastest growing Christian populations in the world. Join Wendy Griffith and George Thomas for Christian World News. Young people are the ones who are open to the gospel. Powerful stories of suffering and hope that affect all Christians. Watch Christian World News Saturday at 5 p.m. Get Protect Your Sleep and discover how to improve the quality of your life. A free DVD or booklet from the Christian Broadcasting Network. If you're not a great sleeper, you can do things to make yourself a great sleeper. If you're already a pretty good sleeper, you can enhance your sleep and be even better. Five leading experts help remove the obstacles between you and restorative sleep. When you don't get a restful night's sleep, you wake up with an accumulation of stress. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to get your free DVD or booklet today. Everything you do, you do better with a good night's sleep. You'll discover how food affects your sleep, how to put insomnia to rest, explore effective remedies for sleep apnea, and much more in Protect Your Sleep. Wake up to your best life and get Protect Your Sleep today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to get your free DVD or booklet. And welcome back to CBN News Watch. Prayer is much needed prayer for Chandler Moore, who actually just lost everything in his home to a house fire. The worship leader and recording artist also has new music that we're listening to right now, and it's a timely word for us all. The project is called Feelings. Feelings. I found myself 
in a place of sorrow. I found myself in a place of grief. And at first I didn't have language for it. All I knew was something was off. You, um, so you've been at this for a while. Many people will know your voice from Maverick City Music, but you recently released uh, a solo project, Feelings. Yes, sir. Why Feelings yes, sir. and why now? So uh, at the top of 2020, like it was for many people, it was a time of uh, heavy introspection for me. I won't pretend I'll say what I'm feeling So those first couple weeks of quarantine were really, uh, really tough, tough for me. So I think the Lord allowed that to happen for me personally so that I can really introspectively look at things that I just buried inside of me and allow ministry, allow church, allow uh, family, allow all these other things as to be happen as distractions and not really focus on things that were happening in Chandler. So March to like April, May-ish, June-ish, and then all the stuff with racism and injustices started happening. And I was just grieving really bad. I didn't have language for the grief. I mean, there were months where I could not pray. And I felt guilty. I carried this guilt thing like, man, I need to be able to pray to God. I need to be able to do this. I need to be able to do this, do this. And God hit me one day and it was like, yo, no, like settle in this. I want you to sit in this because this is where I am. So feelings was just birthed out of the awareness and the realization and the revelation that God is not this person in heaven who's sitting on a throne pushing me to get or pushing me to move through my emotions and get no, he's sitting with me in the feelings. And it's not that the feelings are a guide. My feelings are a gauge. I won't lean onto my feelings. I'll, I'll trust the Lord. But he does sit with me in them. In light of what you're saying in the project being called Feelings, we're still in a real precarious time. Pandemic, um, riots in the nation's capital, um, threats of potential violence, um, racism, you name it. How are you feeling? I thought feelings when I released feelings in November. I thought it would be the end of, all right, God is, you know, releasing me from this. And no, it was not. It's, it's, it's a tool to help me keep on processing. I have a song called He Understands, and it talks about how Jesus lived through every emotion we have ever felt. So in, in 2021, I mean, we can't even get out of the second week good enough. And I'm still feeling grief. I'm still feeling anger. I'm still having this holy indignation about what's happening and what's happening to people who look like us and what's happening in the churches around the country. But I have a resolve that, hey, I'm not the only one feeling like this. Like there's a God who stands for righteousness and it's abortion and injustice. It's not either or. He stands yeah. for righteousness and he feels the way I feel about all that's happening. So that's been my resolve, trusting the Lord on my heart and not leaning on what I feel, like acknowledging it, but not leaning on it, but allowing the Lord to direct my path. You're not alone in your frustration. He understands, he understands. Have a friend, he understands. Again, the project is called Feelings. It's available right now wherever you purchase your music. Stay with us. There's much more of CBN News Watch ahead. We'll be right back. Introducing the CBN Bible from CBN.com. Now, an easier way to study the Bible and grow in your faith. Highlight your favorite verse. Read separate versions at a glance. Click and read a commentary. Or cross-reference your favorite verse using the Strong's Concordance all the right tools to study the Bible, all in one place. The CBN Bible, available at cbn.com slash Bible or the iTunes App Store. This is CBN Newswatch. Thanks for joining us. Watch breaking news, exclusive stories and programs, credible news reporting. We show you what's happening in the world and how you can pray about it. 
This is CBN News Watch because truth matters. Weekdays at 5 on the CBN News Channel. Woohoo! Hi, Superbook fans. Here's something else you'll love. <laughs> it's the new Superbook Bible app. <laughs> it's packed with games, activities, and Superbook episodes that you can watch for free. Oh, no! There's trivia, a fun daily devotional, and answers to your Bible questions. Plus, an easy-to-understand Bible the whole family will enjoy. You can even create your own Superbook character. Ta-da! Whoa! No super falls, man. Come with... Uh, sorry, pardon me. Sorry, excuse me. Ouch! Are you getting this? Earn super points to win daily prizes, too. And so much more! <sighs> Time to get back to my adventures. See you soon. It's the new Superbook Bible app. Free downloads on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon. It has the power to influence weight loss, boost your immune system, and improve brain function. We've seen an explosion of data on the role of the gut microbiome in health. The free Build a Better Gut booklet reveals the latest information about the gut microbiome. You'll discover how your gut affects the rest of your health. The gut microbiome has been linked to depression and cancer and heart disease. Learn how to build a stronger, healthier gut. The microbiome, if it's in good composition, are really protecting us all the time from more invasive things. Get the Build a Better Gut booklet, free from the Christian Broadcasting Network. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash build a better gut. You need to make sure that your microbes are working with you, not against you. And if you order online, you'll get immediate access to the Build a Better Gut series, a digital copy of the booklet, and related bonus material. Build a Better Gut today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash build a better gut for your free copy. And welcome back to CBN News Watch. Right now it is time for your Monday motivation. And today I want to leave you with this thought. This is a new deck. It comes with new grace and it also comes with new mercy. You can't earn them. You can't buy them. It is God's priceless gift. And all you have to do is make the time to receive it. With that word, I encourage you to make today a marvelous Monday and walk in that grace and mercy. And be sure to have yourself a wonderful week. Be intentional about it. And you can certainly make that happen. Well, that is going to do it for this edition of CBN Newswatch. I want to thank you so much for watching. I want to also remind you, you can always find more of our programs on the CBN News channel at any time. You can also find them online at CBNNews.com. Hopefully, you will take the time to let us know what you think about the stories you've seen here today. You can email us. The address is right there at the bottom of your screen, newswatch at CBN.com. And, of course, you can always reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. We certainly would love to hear from you. Again, I encourage you to make this a marvelous Monday and be sure to have yourself a wonderful week. Be sure to do that on purpose. We'll see you right back here same time tomorrow. Goodbye, everybody, and God bless. Thank you for watching.